One of the questions I get quite a bit on this channel is what software I use to make my videos. And so today I wanted to do a kind of impromptu casual video on showing you how I use the most essential app in my workflow. And that app is ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow is an app that lets you record your screen. It also is a video editor. And so the way it works for me is when I start a video, I typically record on my Mac. I do actually most of my work on a iPad, but it's the screen recording options on an iPad aren't as good. I still use it sometimes and you'll see some of my videos are on an iPad and I uh, think it works great. And that just uses iOS as standard screen recording, but ScreenFlow gets me a lot of features that I like. So I use it most of the time when I'm recording um, something for the channel. And so for example, I'm on my desktop here. I'm just kind of looking at my own website. Uh, here's a link to some other stuff that I've done and you know, click into a thing. There we go. Uh, I could see, click there, go to the main menu, all this stuff. So I'm just recording the screen right now and everything's going great. And once I'm done, I hit a keyboard shortcut. That's going to save the video and I'm going to see the screen. And so I get a uh, video track, an audio track, and uh, you can kind of just see when I scrub through it. Here's all the stuff that's going on. And what you need to do to get this kicked off is when you start using ScreenFlow, you can do new recording, uh, which has a keyboard shortcut of, uh, let's see, it's command shift two. Uh, so that's the keyboard shortcut you can use for it, but you should be able to remap that. But basically you get all these options for recording um, from what display you want. If you have multiple displays, you can choose one. Uh, you can choose uh, what audio you want. You can record video at the same time. I've never done that, but I theoretically could use the FaceTime camera on my computer. Computer, and I can record the computer audio as well. And then you get the option to select a portion of the screen or do this to do the full screen. I typically do the full screen and then crop in on my videos. But I've already done that. Um, so I have the video here. I have the video file. A lot of times I'll record into Ferrite on my uh, iPad at the same time. And so I'll actually have an audio file from Ferrite that's higher quality than this one. Uh, this one's just recorded from the internal microphone on the Mac, but I'll typically bring in the Ferrite one. Those details aren't important, but basically what I love about ScreenFlow is I get this really nice editor that's really fast um, and you get a lot of nice features. And so I'm gonna show you just a few of the things that I tend to do with a new video. So I'm going to actually just remove the audio track because we're not gonna need that for this video. And so in this one, what am I doing? I'm just showing off what you can do on the site and you, you know, you just see all of this stuff. So uh, what do I wanna do? I probably wanna call out clicks. Clicks are a thing that you definitely want to see uh, for a tutorial. You really wanna see when I click on, let's see if I play, I wanna see when I clicked on that link. And so to do that, uh, what I need to do is I select the clip, I go up here and there's a whole bunch of options. This is where you control the video, like the sizing, the opacity of it. Uh, you can do some color controls. So if I want to like boost the saturation, I would never do that for a <laughs> screen recording, but I could do that for um, regular video. You can do some stuff here. I can adjust the sound. I can adjust uh, some video motion, which is kind of interesting, but screen recording. So these are the screen recording things. And so I can, see the mouse pointer. And what I want to do is add a click effect. And so I do a radar effect, which I kind of like, and it defaults to these settings, 400 uh, pixels around 0.95 seconds. And so if I kind of go back and play this back, I should see that, um, that click effect. There you go. And so that's actually not my preferred one. I prefer to make it a little smaller, a little shorter, make it more of a pop. And then I adjust the color a little bit. I kind of like a more pinkish purple one. And so then you're going to see the sorts of clicks that you'll see in my videos. So that's the first thing that I always do. Uh, I always want you to be able to see what I'm clicking and everything. Then this is a video editor. So you can see I recorded a minute and 20 seconds. And I think from like here all the way to the beginning, nothing happens. So I'm going to go back here. This is about the spot. And then there's keyboard shortcuts. So I just hit T uh, that cuts it in half. And then I can delete it, drag this 
over there and now I have just the 27 seconds of video that I actually did something. And then another cool thing, and this works in almost every video editor, is you can hit Shift Z and that will change the zoom of your timeline to fit whatever your content is. So then you get a better view of everything that's going on. Uh, this is really nice for projects that kind of change size as you go. You can kind of get a good view of everything um, without uh, figuring out exactly <laughs> what zoom level you want to get to. Just Shift Z and then you can get to see the whole project at once. And then sometimes I like to zoom. So I like to keep, you know, the video a little dynamic. So when I do like, when I click this menu up here in a second, I want to kind of zoom in on that, right? So I'm going to go to, you want to zoom in between action. You don't want to zoom during the action. So here's where I click. I can see the kind of thing happen. Um, so before I click it, I'm going to go a few frames before that. And then I'm going to go back to this video section and I'm going to hit action. And so that adds the video action here. And so this is where ScreenFlow gets really powerful and why I really love it, because it lets me do things that would be much more complicated in other applications, uh, something like Apple's Motion or Adobe After Effects. You could do these things and you could probably do more, but it's going to involve keyframing. It's going to involve a lot more stuff that's just kind of tricky. <laughs> so. You can kind of see um, there's this animation here and then nothing happens, like nothing has changed in the video when I scroll through it. And so basically what this does, and this is the most important thing to know about ScreenFlow, is that there's what's happening before your video animation and what's happening after it. And so what I can do is I can just go to any spot after that and I know that I want to zoom in on this section. So I'm going to scroll over here to zoom in. I'm going to drag it over here, get those to line up with the corner so I can get closer to it. And then there we go. And so now when I scroll over this, you can see it animate. And so if I just play it back in real time, you're going to see it animate in. I click it, I do that. And then I want to go back out, right? So I'm going to go back out, hit another action, and this will be to go back to 100%. I'm actually just going to type in 100% and center it. That's what the position is. And so then I have, it zooms in, I click it, I click it again, and I zoom out. And maybe that timing's not quite right. And this is where the magic happens, because if I was keyframing this in an application um, like Final Cut, like Premiere, like After Effects, like Motion, then I'd have to kind of go in and move those around. But instead, I can just move that whole animation anywhere I want. And then I can play it back and I can see, okay, that's better, but let's make that zoom out a little faster. Well, how do you do that? You just grab the edge of this, make it a little shorter. And now that's gonna be a faster zoom, right? So there's that. I could make it incredibly fast. I could make it super, super small, play it back, whoop, <laughs> that's done. That's a little too fast, I think, but I could do something like that. There we go. And now I've got a quicker animation there. So that's really the killer feature of this and that's where you can get kind of creative um, and i'll show you one last thing uh, one of the things i like to do with my videos is kind of this falling animation i'll do this with like text titles and and things all the time but basically like at the end of this i want this to fall away right so i'm going to go at the end i'm going to add an action to have it fall and again what i need to do is i need to change its position and then i also rotate it a little so let's rotate it 20 degrees there we go. That's actually a little bit much. Let's do like negative 10. That's kind of a big thing. So I don't want to rotate it too much. So negative 10. And I'm going to use uh, command minus to zoom out a little bit, a little bit more. Um, let me do that again. Actually, I can't. I'm as far out as I can go. And I'm just going to drag it down here. So now when I kind of go up here, it's going to do this fall thing. And then if I hit play, there you go, it falls. And then for my falling animations, I kind of find that you want it to be a little faster. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. And then the last thing that I'll show you about animations, that's probably gonna be the end of this video because I should do something more official if we're gonna <laughs> talk about ScreenFlow entirely, but you can right click on an animation and change the curve type. So I have it set to ease in and out, um, but for a fall, if you think about that, uh, if you think about just how gravity works, it's gonna ease in, but it's never gonna ease out. It's never gonna start slowing down. So I'm just gonna do ease in for this. I'm gonna play it back. There we go. That's pretty good. You can also do linear. You can do exponential ease-ins. Um, so that's going to start out really slow and then zip, <laughs> fall away. Um, Ease-in for a falling animation is a little more realistic. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then I, 
One last thing I did mention, like when I was making all these animations, it defaulted to this two second duration. It defaulted to ease in and out. And so that if I go up to preferences and then uh, timeline, I can choose my default transition. So default or sorry, my default um, duration of things. And so we have a video action I've set to two seconds. I think it defaults to 0.5 seconds, but I made it two seconds because for me, that tends to be how long it, um, my animations go for and how they look good. And then default action curve, ease in and out is what I always do. Um, it defaults to linear when you just install the app, but ease in and out tends to be pretty nice for the sorts of stuff I do. Like this kind of zoom in to an element on the page looks pretty nice when you do an ease in and out for two seconds. So that's what I defaulted to. You can default to whatever you want, but you can set those so it's easy. And typically you can just uh, kind of go up here, make sure you have the clip selected, action, change the thing to whatever you want, go over here, change it to whatever you want again, and then just play it back and it just works. It's really, really cool. And then again, the magic of this and the, what separates it from the other sorts of things that um, that are out there is I can just change the durations on these, I can move them around, I can delete them, and it just kind of works. Everything works as you'd expect. And so that's a really cool thing. Um, even this, this animation at the end still works perfectly, even though I've kind of messed with the stuff before it. So that's ScreenFlow, that's why I use it. Uh, it's primarily the animations, it's primarily the great recording options that it gives you. And it's really, really powerful. It's, um, I think it's 99 bucks, I'll make sure that's right <laughs> and throw a correction here if that's uh, not the price, but it's uh, pay, pay for it once and then they do big updates every couple years uh, where you have to kind of upgrade. And I think there's an upgrade discount Account if you've already purchased it before, but it, I get so much use out of this app. I really, really love it. And uh, you may as well.